last night to them. So I did a live on YouTube. So we'll do we're back here on Facebook Live this evening. Um, I thought I would jump on here for a moment uh, and do a short video uh, since it's late and I didn't get home till late tonight. So didn't get the chance to, to get to the, the uh, videos and, and my dinner till later. So um, and had to take care of a couple other family things. I have a dog that's probably snoring. You'll probably hear you get to hear the Nally life. That's uh, exciting. Uh, my name is Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board certified family physician and a board certified obesity medicine specialist. Um, I thought I would come to you live this evening and talk about I can't do keto because um, I, I hear I hear this statement so many times. I can't do keto because. Uh, and I, I thought that I'd start the, the first one off, which I've heard multiple times, is I can't do ketos because I, I miss eating the vegetables. Or I can't do keto because um, it gives me cramps in my feet. Or I can't do keto because my roommate doesn't eat meat. Or I can't do keto because um, uh, uh, there's a whole slew of reasons that you can't do keto. And, that, and there's a bunch of them. And so I thought I would talk about those a little bit. Um, and, and what's the real underlying reason? Um, I hear a lot of people say, well, I can't do keto because I miss eating the vegetables. Um, if you miss a certain food and you can't um, improve your health with a diet that dramatically improves your health, because you miss a certain food, uh, means you probably have a food addiction and you need to uh, look at that. Um, one of the things that I found um, when I started doing a ketogenic lifestyle is that that, that lifestyle um, allows you to start looking at food as a fuel, not as a reward or as a, um, an escape or as a release of endorphins. Most of us eat, and if you, you'll notice, we, we usually use food to celebrate with. So often our brain is, has tied to it that food is a celebratory issue and that um, we have to be celebrating, we have to use foods that make us feel comfort, we have to use foods that make us feel good. And we often look at food um, that way. The, the, the one way I found to break that is to actually keep a food journal. So I have patients keep a food journal for two or three months and they hate doing it. Um, but what happens is by the first six weeks or seven weeks, people start to recognize what and why. And so with food journaling, one of the things that I recommend is that you plan on eating what you're going to eat. You write so so tonight you write down okay I'm going to have this for breakfast tomorrow. I'm going to have this for lunch tomorrow, and I have this for dinner tomorrow. And then the next night you account to yourself: Did I do what I was going to plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a snack or whatever? And did I drink what I planned on drinking? And if you didn't, you need to then write down why you didn't do that. Um, now maybe that you just didn't have time, you didn't plan, um, or so and so brought the peanut M and M's to the, it had it on their desk. Um, that's another complaint I hear. I can't do keto because everyone has candy on their desk. Um, no one is forcing you to eat the candy. Uh, no one is forcing you to eat the vegetables. There's no um, there's no vegetable police. Although the vegetarians and vegans think there should be, there isn't. Um, there's no M and M police. There's no one that's going to slap your hand. Um, and so there's everybody uses reasons and excuses, and the excuses are usually. Um, a reason that the person allows themselves to say, I just don't want to, I don't really want to do it because I don't want to change um, or I'm addicted to it and I don't want to admit to it. And so a lot of people don't want to hear that and that's probably going to offend some people. And there's a few of you and you know who you are. You're probably going to send me nasty emails that I offended you because I told you that because you didn't want to eat do keto, you didn't want to eat, you didn't want to give up vegetables that um, it was offensive to you. No, I'm just giving you the truth that every single patient that I've dealt with over the last 16 years, when they keep a food journal and they understand why they're eating and why they didn't follow a pattern that they had planned on doing, um, they, they see they see an answer and they see success. And they see why that that food uh, is usually driven by <clears throat> a craving, it's driven by an addiction, or it's driven by habit. And so um, you start to look at food as a fuel, not as a reward and not as a um, uh, a, a pleasurable experience. Uh, and that's one of the challenges we find is that because we live in a, a time of plenty, um, and although I know it's harder to find food on the shelves in the last few weeks, uh, because we have these issues um, and the addictions to food and the plenty of food, we start to use it in a way that is a, a challenge that way. Um, so anyway, so what I wanted to ask is, if, you, if you're on here and you and you 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 or your friend says I, I just miss eating the vegetables and I can't do keto because I miss vegetables, what I want to ask you is why? Um, there there is no the only reason we introduced fiber into the diet 50 years ago was because when you eat a carb based diet that eliminates fat or low fat, it creates 
amazing constipation. Um, and high carbs with protein creates adobe in your colon. I mean, now we used to use build homes with adobe brick. Um, that same stuff can be built in your colon um, by not eating fat. And that's what, so we introduced this fiber and then the, they came out and said, well, you have to have 12 servings of fruits and vegetables because of fiber, not because of the carbs or not because of the, veg, the, uh, the, the nutrients, but because of the fiber that was there. When you, when you take away the carbs and you just do fat and protein, you actually don't need fiber. You rarely need fiber. Now, it takes about four to six weeks for your gut to get used to that change. And a lot of people will ride through it for the first two weeks and go, I'm horrible, my bowels are terrible. And But you have to realize for your bowel function to change, it takes anywhere from four to six weeks for the bowel flora to change, the, the bacteria to change, for the stomach to, and the, the bowels to get used to moving that bowel, the bowel through there, or the, the stool through there correctly. So those are things you, you understand. And I'm rambling in that part of it. Um, but uh, so let me look and see if there's some questions about that. Um, let me jump in here and just roll back and just see. I got a whole slew of patient, patients, uh, people on here. Um, they don't want to, true. Uh, let's see. Sharon's glad to see you on here as well, catching live. Hello from uh, Memphis. Cool. Let's see. Food and emotions uh, are connected. Yes, we our emotions are heavily connected to our food. And when you break that connection, all of a sudden you start recognizing that your food is a fuel, not a reward, and not a um, a birthday cake or a you know a, a, we we often reward ourselves. Same thing happens with with cigarette use. Um, people smoke after a meal. They smoke after a stressful day, a bad phone call, a scary situation, and they didn't smoke after sex. And they, they do that because it, it's used as a reward of completion. We often use food the same way, a reward of completion. And and your, your brain is looking forward for this endorphin that's released from that. Um, and if you don't um, if you don't give it, they, get, they, they actually go through withdrawal. Uh, so important. Let's see. Going to try food journaling between keto two and Two years, uh, yeah. So, and, and those people that fall off the the keto plan and have trouble getting back on, number one, it's usually because they they it takes three days to get the carb cravings out of your system. And if you're food journaling, that allows you to look at what you feel and and try to assess why do I feel this way? What's causing me to feel this way? And no, you're not going to die from it if you don't if you don't eat carbs in the next three days. You might feel like it for a short period of time, um, but that's that's the, the whole point. Um, one of the benefits of fasting is it forces a person to look at their cravings and their the way they feel, and it, it's it is an, a way to to speed that process along. But if you want to understand why you fall up off the wagon when you walk past your your coworker's desk that has uh, M and M's on it, you have to understand what the trigger is to go past there, and then what the trigger is to put them in your mouth because there's usually a reason. Um, it's a, you, there's some benefit that you're look you, that you subconsciously are looking at. Um, can't believe the excuses I hear mostly that they just have to eat carbs. I know there's tons of excuses out there with that. Um, I am a carb addict, so I just stopped eating them. If you, if you have the willpower to do it, Deb, it's great. Some people struggle with that. And that's why I, I brought this up. I am keto and eat low carb veggies like leafy greens. You know, okay. So let's, let me clarify. Um, a, a ketogenic diet in my perspective and, and, and if you come to me in my office, I'm going to tell you a ketogenic diet is a, a low carbohydrate diet that keeps the total carbs under 20 grams per day. Now, to keep that under 20 grams per day, that means you can't eat any vegetables other than leafy greens that aren't cooked. If you cook a leafy green, it, it is it is about, let's say you cook cabbage, it's a leafy green, um, it's 10 cups of carbs cooked. And so if you eat a half, or a ten, a half cup, so if you eat a half cup of cooked um, cabbage, that's 10 grams of carbohydrate. And why? Because remember, leafy greens or fiber are basically a bunch of carbohydrates lined up with double bonds. Our stomachs don't break the double bonds, but cows do and horses do and um, ruminants do. They have these stomachs, they have two or three stomachs or four stomachs that that, that fiber passes through and that prolonged acid and, and um, uh, fermentation that occurs in their gut breaks the double bond so that they, then they can access the sugar from that fiber. Uh, some of us actually have the ability to access some of the sugar from the fiber more than others, depending on our gut bacteria. Uh, but the challenge is that if you cook, if you cook it, if you blend it, or if you juice it, you're actually breaking either through heat or through um, uh, friction, those double bonds in those sugars, and it ends up activating the sugar for you. So most people who can't stop eating vegetables are using them because they're actually getting the carb from them. And they, they don't know that, or their brain knows that. They just don't, don't admit to it. So... Um, can a pregnant person eat keto? Of course they can. Uh, let's see. I'm talking about most of the people you know, says Kathy. Uh, you don't eat food. So remember, leafy greens, are. if you don't cook them, they're the, they, they do have a leafy green is still 10 grams of carbohydrate raw per cup. 
and 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 some of us may get more carb out of that than others. That's why with the, with the carnivore um, uh, dietary approach being so successful with a lot of people, those are a lot of people that eliminated all the all the leafy greens out of their diet, and they suddenly started seeing success because they they actually broke down a lot of those fibers in the leafy greens in a ketogenic state that that others did not. And so that's one of the reasons so many people feel so good on carnivore is they have completely eliminated all the carbohydrates out of their diet. Any carbohydrate coming from any leafy green or vegetable, they've eliminated, and they actually start to feel better. Now, as the gut heals, um, you, we see some changes that occur so that people can use a little bit of leafy green uh, later on down the road, like 18 to 24 months down the road. But um, that's that's the challenge. So uh, if you're doing keto, I'm going to tell you to keep the carbs less than 20 grams total because the, even the leafy greens uh, can play a role in cravings if you're really insulin resistant. I'm addicted to potatoes bread and bread, but don't want to be diabetic. So bye bye carbs. You just need, yeah, I tell people in my office, okay, look at it this way. You're allergic to carbohydrates, number one. And number two, if a lion doesn't eat it, you shouldn't either. Um, my sister says because of a lack of fiber, she's she'll not get the proper nutrients. Okay, fiber is not a nutrient. Fiber is a broom that goes through the colon sweeping because you ate too many carbs and protein and you created adobe bricks in your colon. That's all it is. It's not a nutrient. Um, if the reason we introduced, the reason we started telling people, oh, you got to have more vegetables because the nutrients, the, the, the vegetables, the, uh, the vitamins are there. We, we took away the fat. Now, remember if, if the, if the, if the vitamin sounds like a letter of the alphabet, A, B, E, D, K, any, any other than vitamin C, that's the exception, but any other, any other vitamin that sounds like a letter of the alphabet is fat soluble, meaning it has to be, it has to be transported via uh, fat. Otherwise, it can't pass through the cells and can't pass into the system. So guess what? Um, animal fat contains all of the vitamins you need and all of the minerals that you need. It's in the fat. It's not in the vegetables. Well, it is, but you have to eat 10 times the vegetables to get the nutrients that you get from a little bit of bacon fat or a little bit of tallow from the beef. Um, so that's important to understand. I am over meat uh, let's see. I am over meat, but do it, do it necessary. I'm not quite sure what that means, Jennifer. Love the Kermit voice. You know, the Kermit voice comes out periodically. All right. Um, gave up carbs, eliminated diabetes and hypertension. That's fantastic. Uh, carnivore and well issues. That explains a lot. Four to six weeks. Yes. But there's a shortage of toilet paper right now. Um, well, Candace, there's always leaves. So if you're not eating, eating the leafy greens, you can use the leaves if you're lacking toilet paper. Just saying. Um, and there's not, and then, the, like I said, there's always those, those fancy portable bidets that you can turn your water bottle into a little bidet in the bathroom. If you're out of toilet paper, um, there's a whole slew of things that you could, you could use. Um, if you've ever been camping or lived in the military, you realize that you, you can live without toilet paper. You just need to wash your hands. Uh, vodka. I don't know what that means. Sh Shell. I, I think it was related to something I said. Finally caught me live says Ron. All right. Great timing. I'm trying to get started on keto again today. Fantastic. Jonathan. That's awesome. <clears throat> what is the minimum and maximum fat you need if weight loss is your goal? So, Gail, that de that depends on how tall you are and how physically active you are. Now, go to my website at docmuscles.com, click on the uh, keto um, diet link, and you can get a copy of my diet, and it gives you all the breakdowns for that there. Uh, and if, oh, and if you haven't subscribed, uh, let's see right here. Subscribe right there. Push that little button. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Push the button. Subscribe. You need to do that. Um, and that way you get – you it, when you, when I go live, you, you – uh, uh, you see these now I'm referring to the YouTube because I'm going to put this on YouTube. So if this is a replay, subscribe. If you haven't go over here and subscribe to Dr. Nelly. So when I go live, um, on, you know, on Facebook live, you can actually catch me as well. I keep seeing Facebook quotes from friends. It's all about the baking and they have been doing it at home. I know the baking is a challenge. Um, it's always a challenge. Uh, my name is Linda and I am a carboholic. Well, hello, Linda. My name is Adam, and I'm a carboholic as well. Um, L. <laughs> oh, Eli, oh, so, oh, you're posting for something there. Okay, first step. All right, cooked cabbage makes my blood sugar go high. That because when at when you cook it, it activates the sugar that was that made up the fiber. Fiber goes away, and sugar arises. It's you, you're just changing the one form of fiber into the form of sugar. Is what is all you're doing. Um, CVID gal again. Uh, this low carb lifestyle is the one solid thing I'm clinging to in this pandemic. Why? But I turn back to carbs now. Hey, lifetime carb back here. Cool. I, I, I'm with you. Crystal says, how about blended and fermented cabbage? 
um, it's pre-digested. Well, the fiber is pre-digested, but not the sugar. Um, if you, let's see, remember, fermentation is taking a sugar and turning it into an alcohol. Whether you eat it as a sugar, like glucose or fructose, or you eat it as an alcohol, it still raises insulin depending on where it's processed. Alcohol raises insulin when it's, when it's processed by the liver, as does fructose. And glucose raises insulin just because it stimulates the insulin release just to be to be used in the body. So if you're blending and fermenting, you're still creating, you're activating sugars from the fiber. So be aware of that. The carb count is very confusing to me. Um, the, Pauline, that's where you want to go. If you get a copy of my diet, I actually list the carb counts of all of the various foods, vegetables, fruits, things like that. So that I've listed them out. So, so for instance, if a person says, hey, I want to have a half a bagel. Well, half a bagel is 30 grams of carbohydrate. I want to have a piece of bread. Well, one piece of bread is 20 grams of carbohydrate, no matter what kind of bread it is. doesn't matter if it's Ezekiel bread or, or, or whole wheat bread or white bread. It's still 20 grams of carbs per slice, roughly. Um, so let's see. Well, hello, Scott. How are you? Um, love this. Love sandwiches, but not worth it. So, Jennifer, I love sandwiches too. But I learned my, my wife started doing lettuce rolls um, and lettuce wraps. Those were great. Not leaving the house right now, so have no temptations until the virus is controlled. Well, hopefully that'll be long enough that you'll realize that um, the temptation is is really cravings, and that you start looking at food in a different way. And you can probably hear my cat uh, calling in the background. Um, where do we get vitamin C? Uh, where do you get vitamin C if you don't eat vegetables? You get it from um, a whole slew of other sources of vitamin C. Uh, there, you can, you, uh, there, there are multiple sources of C. You can actually get vitamin C in, 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 in animal meat, in regular meat has it. Uh, you can get vitamin C through some forms of, of nuts. Um, you don't have to have a huge amount of vitamin C. Uh, and I'll, I'll do a whole a topic on vitamin C, but you do not have to eat fruits to get your vitamin C. You can get it from a number of other sources. Um, Leaves of three, let it be. <laughs> that is very true. Hunters know the toilet paper tricks. They do, David. They do. They know them very well. Um, hello, Kathy. Uh, let's see. 50 pounds down. Congratulations, Jennifer. That's awesome. Hello, Andrea. My brother was in the core, going to the bathroom outside, ended with impetigo. Uh, it could do that if you uh, if you don't wipe correctly. Been keto three years with no health problems. Should I stay keto? Um, David, I've been keto for 16 years. And, and it's the only thing that works for me. Uh, crazy how fast my weight has gone up. Um, let's see. I, it rolled real quick. Let's see. I missed that. Um, let's see. In the office, I got a document of all the fake sugars, which ones are bad. Uh, yes, that same document is online. It's on my website under the freebies. So go to docmuscles.com and click on the freebies. You can see the sugar article that I talk about all the different sh uh, sugar alcohols and various uh, sugar and sugar replacements that are there and which ones to avoid. Watching from Ontario. Hello, Carol. Let's see. Just got to get your bod back on target. Maybe this uh, might be helpful. Yes. Okay, let's see here. Uh, butter lettuce is the bomb. Uh, it tastes good. Yes, Michelle, it does. Uh, I will start counting 20 carbs instead of net carbs starting tomorrow. Well, Julia, start tonight. Start today. Start right now. There's nothing wrong with starting now. If you say, I'm going to start tomorrow, it, it, that's, that's, that's the way our brain says, I don't really have to do it because I don't really want to. So if you're going to do it, you commit today. And I'm going to commit you right now. Julia, will you commit right now to no more than 20 grams of carbs per day? All right. I, I can't hear you. You have to tell me. All right. Uh, crazy how fast weight went up. This is Mandy. Uh, I've had some not so good days in the last few months. Last two weeks, I've been back on strict. So can you go up? Yeah. So um, you got it. You got just to start over. Start step one. Keep the carbs under 20 grams total. Total carbs. Uh, do a one to one protein to fat ratio based on your 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 caloric needs, and you can calculate it off the off of the. Uh, I've done a blog post on it, so if you go to the, my blog, you can type in protein, and it'll give you the protein calculation there on, on my blog section, or you can just get the, get a copy of my diet. It's in my book. If you get the keto cure, like this is the book right here. For those of you that may not know me, um, this is the book. Uh, it's a combination of me, Jimmy Moore, and Maria Emmerich. I wrote the text. Jimmy wrote some si all the sidebars in it, and Maria wrote sixty amazing recipes in here. Some of the best recipes I think she's ever done. Uh, a great book. You need to get that. It's on Amazon. Um, and, uh, and, that, that's, that's the, and that talks about 16 different diseases that are literally reversed if you do a ketogenic lifestyle. All right. Um, let's see here. I no longer want veggies, tending to eat meat, eggs, and cheese. 
you know what? Occasionally, I will occasionally crave, like tonight, um, we had leftover salmon and some shrimp, and I had a little bit of a, my, my wife made a Caesar salad, and I was craving a little bit of salad. It tasted good, so I had a little salad today. I'm, I'm about 90% carnivore. 10% of the time I'll, I'll eat. So maybe one day out of the week, I'll have a salad just because I crave it, but it's not, it's nothing more than the leafy greens and some cheese. That's it. Um, that's, that's about it. Uh, let's see. Kath, uh, Julia says, yes. All right, Julia, you're committed. I'm, I'm keeping you to it. All right. Um, I no longer want to, oh, see, I read that one. All right, guys, let's see. Todd Kerr. Yes. Check out Robert. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Let's see here. Uh, Love the book, says Linda. Same situation here, but only been stalled out for about eight months, down 80, 86 pounds, then stopped. So Kelly, you need to watch my video from last night about what could cause us to stop. There's multiple reasons. So go back and check out my YouTube video. Go to youtube.com forward slash drnally, um, and you can find the, the, the reasons that people stall or stop. So check that out. Um, you are welcome, Mark. Let's see here. Can you build muscle on keto? Absolutely you can. That's why they call me Doc Muscles. Um, let's see here. Give it a, uh, all right. Well, great questions, guys. I just wanted to come on for a brief period of time here and say hello and, and talk about, um, what your excuse is. I can't do keto. I can't do keto because of, you know, whatever. Um, if you have an, any other excuses, let me know. I'll, I'll tell you what it is, what, why, why that's an excuse. You give me the excuse and I can tell you what, why, why you, you give me the reason and I'll explain what the excuse is. All right. Um, and you do not, do, do you have, oh, somebody, oh, somebody asked the other night, I have to eat fiber because I have colon polyps. No, you have colon polyps because you didn't eat fat and you ate too much carbohydrate. That's where the colon polyps come from. Um, if you if, if skin tags and colon polyps, guess what? They're due to insulin resistance. They're not due to they're not due to lack of fiber. So that's the, the just answer that one. You're you're welcome for replying, Andy. No problem. Uh, let's see here. So hopefully I answered the questions. What if what if what if your roommate doesn't eat meat? Or what if I had I heard an excuse the other day? Um, I can't eat keto because I don't want to offend my coworkers who buy me lunch. Well, number one, why are your coworkers buying you lunch if they don't ask you what your lunch should be? And if you have a coworker that buys you lunch that's bad for you, your coworker enables you. You need to tell your coworker, "Hey, I need this." You need to just tell them straight up, "I can't do it because I'm allergic to it," or "I can't do it because it's going to kill me." Now, if your coworker keeps doing it and they're trying to kill you, um, sometimes we call that. Um, uh, intent to uh, commit a felony. So, so that's a bad thing. You don't want to do that. Um, you, you want to not, uh, if, if I had a friend and I'm enabling my friend by giving them MMs every day, and I know that person's diabetic, am I really a good friend? You probably need different friends who needs enemies when you have friends like that. Uh, so, so they're, they're, you want to look and see if, if you, if you have a true, a true friend or a true coworker, who's, who's helping you out or they buy you lunch yet they don't take the time to ask what type of lunch you need because of your health. Um, that's a problem. So, so you need to face them and say, I, I can't eat this. If you're going to buy lunch, I so appreciate you doing it, but I can't eat it. I have reps, I have drug reps that will bring stuff in for lunch and they'll say, bring in a healthy diet and they bring in crap. They bring in carbs. They bring in bread and salad. It's like, okay, I can have salad, but I can't eat the bread. And then, then we have a conversation and they say, well, and I say, well, I do a ketogenic lifestyle. And if they don't know what it is, I explain it to them. So I tell people I just eat meat and salad. I do too, Kathy. Um, I tell people that and they still bring me, I will tell drug reps that and they still bring me crap um, because they want to make me happy. They want me to, they want to bring a donut because you know, everyone loves donuts. Yeah, I love donuts, but donuts also give me quadruple bypasses. And my dad had a quintuple bypass. Um, I have the same genetics he does. That's the problem. Um, let's see here. Carnivorous and I feel better than I have in years, but my fasting blood sugar is still high after 15 months. So remember, it takes about 18 to 24 months to bring the insulin resistance back under control, Joan. Uh, some people can take up to two years. Can you reverse skin tags? They will atrophy, yes. Not all of them will, but many of them will, Mark. Um, hello, Vicky. how are you? Stressing and I really want dark chocolate. So Kathy, there's something called Lily's chocolate, which is wonderful. You can, that that's, they have a, that's a great low carbohydrate option. Um, Robin, you are welcome. Let's see here. I hate donuts. Um, Kathy, I love donuts, but I don't eat them because donuts don't like me. Modium on carnivore, okay. Well, if you have diarrhea, absolutely. Modium's fine or peptobismal's fine. Um, I get dehydrated and low electrolytes because you're not eating enough salt, Candace. That's the problem. Um, I drink a lot and take salt and mag. You're not taking enough salt. I need between three and four 
teaspoons of salt, pink salt, every day. Otherwise, I get dehydrated or low, I get cramps. If you're doing a ketogenic diet, you have to have salt. You have to replace it. Um, and I've written a whole article on that. Let's see here. Uh, if you want, if you want to get a copy of my, uh, I'll, I'll email you a copy of my salt article that I send out. If you just, if you want to put your email address, uh, I'm trying to think, I don't, I'm not, I, we probably don't want to put e people's email address on Facebook. So to say, if you want to direct message me um, and put your email address in there, in there, let me know, and I can send you a copy of this uh, salt article. Plain sugar-free dark chocolate would be an option. Uh, Lily's makes part. The, Lily's is my, the option that I tell people. Eric says, I just don't do carbs. Most people respect it. That's, yeah, exactly. Hospital stay gave me nothing but high-carb food. Now, the challenge is if you get hospitalized, I, unless you have a doctor that understands keto, and thankfully there's a couple of guys in my hospital that do, um, but a lot of guys don't. They just put you on a bunch of carbs, and it's, it's it becomes a challenge when you're hospitalized, and I, and I get that. Hopefully, though, over time, that's going to change. Doing good tonight, taking one day at a time, uh, staying home in order, in, 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 by order in California. Good. Okay. What type of magnesium may be too much magnesium? Oh, well, there's multiple types of magnesium. Mo many of the magnesiums will give you looser stools, um, except for magnesium glycinate. But sometimes that's necessary for some people. So depending on what we're doing, if, if you're using a, a true, like a, a real salt or uh, pink Himalayan salt. Usually there's adequate magnesium if you're taking in enough salt in general. If not, we add 250 to 500 milligrams of salt uh, a, on a daily basis is what I usually start with with a lot of people. Let them fear you. <laughs> yes, that's a, I, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good way to do it. Um, when you're helping people understand what, they, what, what to bring you for lunch. Yes. How to prevent kidney damage with high protein diet. Um, Catherine, uh, that I have written an entire article and an entire chapter on kidney disease and how a ketogenic diet solves kidney disease in my book. If you are wanting to truly wanting to understand it, get a copy of my book and read it. Uh, skin tags fell off within a couple months. They often do, Kim. It's fantastic, isn't it? All right. I think I caught, caught most of the questions there. Let's see. Same with diet sodas, uh, the baby steps. Take it in the baby steps. I get very sick without it. Without what, Gwinnett? I think I missed that. Um, all right. I love Redmond Mill Salt. I do too. Redmond Mill Salt is fantastic. Uh, there's a link on my website, docmuscles.com. Use the link if you want to get there. Uh, Redmond Real Salt, they are a fantastic company. I use it for myself. I use it for my horses. Uh, it's fabulous. Salt is good, not bad. Very true. Salt is fantastic. Salt is not bad. Um, oh, sick without salt, probably. Okay, that's what she's saying. Well, guys, have a great evening. We've been on here about 27 minutes. You've had you've had some amazing questions. I appreciate that. Like I said, direct message me and put your email address in there, and I will send you a copy of uh, my salt article. I'll put you into my system, uh, and it'll send you out an email that, that has the salt article in it. Um, I freak people out by how much salt I use. But yeah, people watch me use salt, and they freak out too. Uh, all right. Well, you guys have a great evening. I'm going to go work on the rest of my charts and try to get my, my, my charts finished up this evening. I thought I would just jump on here and say... How do you hoe to you and uh, give you a little cheering on, uh, cheer, remind you to have more bacon, less carbs. Uh, thank you for the fortification. You are very welcome, Anna. It's great to see you on here. Uh, you guys have a great evening. Uh, remember, keep the fat high, keep the carbs low, and always remember to pass the bacon. Uh, check me out at docmuscles.com. That's where you can find me. You can see me on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash drnally. Um, you can check out my coronavirus information. I wrote a whole page specifically on coronavirus there if you're worried about it. And then check out the blog or check out um, the options we have through through my website there. And if you haven't purchased my book, get a copy of my book, uh, The Keto Cure. All right, guys. Have a great evening. Uh, I'm going to sign off for tonight. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Keep up the great work. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>